Welcome to the World History One Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10-second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 2.2 on the Geography of Mesopotamian Civilization. And once again, we are looking at the cycle of civilization. Wait a minute. I already saw this on the internet. I saw this last lecture. So why am I looking at this again? Well, last lecture we looked at how the entire cycle of civilization works, from how civilizations are established through to how civilizations rebuild after they rise and fall. Today, we start looking at one specific part of this cycle, how civilizations are established. We're going to look at five civilizations to understand this concept. Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Hebrews, the Phoenicians, and the Persians. And we will look at these places to explore both the characteristics and the effects of civilization, which you learned last class. Now, you're probably wondering, what about that prehistory stuff we learned in the first unit? How come I don't hear about that anymore? Well, prehistory is not part of this cycle. Now we will focus exclusively on civilizations. With that said, go to the next slide. You already learned that human beings migrated from northeastern Africa to all over the globe. But that doesn't mean that civilizations all started at once all over the globe. Instead, we need to find the place where we see civilizations start around 4000 to 3300 BCE. Now, here's a map of the globe. We are here in North America. What you're seeing being circled is called the Middle East, and that's pretty much where all the action is going to happen when it comes to the beginnings of civilization. The Middle East is in Southwest Asia, and the modern countries in the Middle East include Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, Israel, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and all of the countries on the Arabian Peninsula. A lot of these places should sound familiar to you because we have a lot of things going on in this part of the world. We're also going to talk about Egypt, but Egypt is in North Africa. It's not in the Middle East. Now that you know where we will be looking, let's go to the next slide. Now that you know the general geography of the Middle East, let's talk about Mesopotamian geography. Mesopotamia is important because this is where we find the first civilizations. Mesopotamia is located in modern day Iraq and Kuwait, and it is the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. In fact, Mesopotamia means between two rivers in Greek. Now, it can be difficult to zoom in on a particular part of the world when we are unsure about the general region that we are looking at. So I'm going to give you three landmarks that you will probably use, not just in this unit, but in other units. Landmark number one is the Mediterranean Sea. And you will be seeing a lot of this body of water this year. Landmark number two is Egypt, a civilization that we will study shortly. Landmark number three is the Persian Gulf. Now, Mesopotamia forms part of something that we call the Fertile Crescent. This is basically land where we see civilizations develop in the ancient era. And the Fertile Crescent begins way out in the east at the Persian Gulf, goes through Mesopotamia, goes down the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, and ends in Egypt. Go ahead to the next slide. Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent are where we find our first civilizations. And Sumer is the world's first civilization. 
Sumer exists from 2900 BCE to about 1940 BCE. Its capital is Ur, and Ur is located in the eastern part of the Fertile Crescent, right where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers come together and flow into the Persian Gulf. The other major Mesopotamian civilization is Babylon. Babylon exists from 2286 BCE to 331 BCE. And Babylon will at one time control much of Mesopotamia. But look at that end date, 331 BCE. As we go through our ancient civilizations, I want you to keep track of how many of these places end at the same time. Go to the next slide. When it comes to the characteristics of civilization that you learned in the last lecture, geography is the most important characteristic. And to understand this concept, we only need to look at our own geography. So, here's a map of the United States. And as you look at this map, one thing becomes apparent. Our country is surrounded by giant bodies of water and one giant landmass. You've got the Atlantic Ocean to the east, you've got the Pacific Ocean to the west, you've got the Caribbean to the south, and then you've got Canada to the north. So it's really hard for anybody to come from the rest of the world and mess with the United States. We are isolated because of our geography. And because of this, we were able to grow strong. Well, Mesopotamia has all of the geographic features you would expect to find in a good civilization, except for one thing. So let's go over the good things. Mesopotamia is a crossroad for trade and migration. If you are going from anywhere in the ancient world to any place else in the ancient world, you're probably passing through Mesopotamia. The rivers allow for crop irrigation. In other words, the rivers give water so people can eat, and there's a surplus of agriculture. If you got rivers, you got to control them, and that's what the Mesopotamians do. They implement flood control technology. They have rich, rich soil. The soil is really good to grow things. But then they got this one small problem. There are multiple invasions, and they are possible due to the topography. In other words, it's really easy to get into this part of the world and take it over. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.